So in this video, we're going to be deriving the formula for the acceleration in circular motion. And we're going to be doing it for non-uniform circular motion, which means the object is not necessarily moving at a constant speed. So the first thing we need to do is find a position vector to describe the object. Because remember, to get to acceleration, we need to get velocity first, and to get velocity, we need the position. So a convenient way to describe the position of the object would be in terms of this angle marked on the diagram. So it's just the angle that the position vector makes with some random horizontal line that we chose. So in terms of the angle, it's pretty easy to see the x and y coordinates of this particle. It's just going to be a cosine theta and a sine theta, where the a is the radius of the circle that the object is traveling along. So note that even though this position vector is written as a function of theta, it's also indirectly a function of time, because theta varies with time. You know, as the particle moves around the circle, the angle is constantly changing. So now we want the velocity vector, which is the time derivative of the position vector. So we're going to differentiate this vector with respect to time. Remember that when taking the derivative of a vector, you can do it component by component. You can differentiate the x and y components separately. The x component is going to become minus a sine theta times d theta dt. And we need that because of the chain rule. Again, theta is a function of t as well. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and rename d theta dt as this letter omega. So omega is the rate of change of this angle. You know, it's called the angular velocity. So how fast is the angle of the object changing. And then once we have that, we can go ahead and differentiate again with respect to time to get the acceleration. And so we're going to need to use the product rule to do this. So each of the components of the velocity vector is going to separate into two components, or two separate terms, by the product rule. And so it's becoming a bit messy. Notice that we have the derivative of omega in both of these terms, and so we're going to rename it to this curly letter called alpha, which is the angular acceleration. So it's the rate of change of the angular velocity. Okay, so now let's look at what we have so far. We have the position, velocity, and acceleration vectors, and, and we also have these quantities omega and alpha, which are the derivatives of this angle that we have in our picture. And so we have the acceleration, but the problem is the acceleration is pointing in some random direction. And we want to separate it into its two components, the centripetal acceleration and the tangential acceleration. You know, the centripetal acceleration, everyone knows about that. It's what's changing the direction of the velocity vector. And it's always pointing towards the center of the circle. So the centripetal acceleration is what you have when it's in uniform circular motion. Now the extra component, the tangential acceleration, is what you get in non-uniform circular motion. And that's, as you can guess, it's tangent to the circle. So you can see that the tangential acceleration is going to be pointing in the same direction as the velocity vector, since the velocity is also tangent to the circle. And the centripetal acceleration is going to be in the same direction as the position vector, because the position vector is pointing from the center of the circle to the edge. So you know, the, cent the centripetal acceleration is going to be parallel to that position vector, just in the opposite direction. So how can we find the magnitude of acceleration in the direction of the position vector 
and in the direction of the velocity vector. Well, we can do that using the dot product. So say we have two vectors, a and b. You can say that a is the acceleration in our problem, and b is the vector that we want to find the component of a in the direction of. So b is going to be a position vector and a velocity vector. And so if theta is the angle between these two vectors, then you can see that the magnitude of a in the direction of b is equal to cosine theta times the magnitude of a. And so we can get an expression for that in terms of the dot product by its definition. So the magnitude of a in the direction of b is going to be equal to a dot product b divided by the magnitude of b. And so we're going to use this formula to find the acceleration in the directions of the position vector and the direction of the velocity vector. So you might want to write these equations of our vectors down so it doesn't get confusing. So first let's find the centripetal acceleration which is going to be the component of acceleration in the direction of the position vector. So we're going to take the dot product of acceleration and position. So remember dot product is just when you multiply the component, the corresponding components, and then add them up. So you know, the x component of acceleration times the x component of position plus the y component of acceleration times the y component of position. And so some terms cancel out and we're going to simplify things. And so then the magnitude of the position no, it's just going to be the radius, as you could probably guess. When we use the formula, the dot product over the magnitude, we get negative uh, omega squared. And so we're just going to take the positive of that because we're only interested in the magnitude. You know, the negative sign is a result of the centripetal acceleration pointing in the opposite direction as the position vector. So the magnitude of acceleration in the direction of the position vector, which is the centripetal acceleration, is equal to radius omega squared. So now let's find the tangential acceleration, which is going to be in the direction of velocity. So we do the exact same thing, but with velocity this time. So we take the dot product of acceleration and velocity, Simplify the expression and divide by the magnitude of the velocity. And so we get the radius times alpha. So now we have both the expressions that we wanted, the components of acceleration that are pointing towards the center of the circle and the component that is tangent to the circle. So now we just want to write them in terms of not alpha and omega. So to find the relationship, we can look at this drawing of an angle here. So remember the definition of a radian is the ratio of arc length to the radius of the circle. So as long as we're measuring this angle in radians, we can write that theta is equal to the arc length divided by the radius of the circle. Omega is the derivative of this angle. So since the radius is constant, we can move 1 divided by the radius outside of the derivative, and we just have the derivative of the arc length. And well, what is the derivative of the arc length? That's just the speed of the object. It's the distance over time. So omega is equal to the speed divided by the radius. 
to find alpha, we just take the derivative of that again. So it's going to be 1 over the radius times the rate of change of the speed. So how fast is the speed of the object changing? So now we can re rewrite our expressions for centripetal and tangential acceleration in terms of the radius and the speed. So the centripetal acceleration is going to be the speed squared divided by the radius, which is the familiar formula that everyone knows. And then the tangential acceleration is just the rate of change of the speed of the object. So you can see very clearly that the tangential acceleration is what is changing the speed of an object, and the centripetal acceleration is changing the direction of the object. In uniform circular motion, when the speed is constant, there is no tangential acceleration, only the centripetal.